my favorite lines, I always start by saying everyone has a story. But not many people, if anybody, has a story like this man right here. So here you are, Chef David Kinch. I didn't think I'd ever be just sitting right next to him. And right in his restaurant, Manresa, in gorgeous Los Gatos. So let me see. I've been to, I've been to your restaurant. And let me see if I can think of adjectives. Uh, fabulous. Fantastic. Extraordinary. Amazing. Expensive, can I say expensive? Mm -hmm. It's expensive, yeah. Um, great value. Great value and an experience, a dining experience. I think we were here for five and a half hours. In fact, our table was right over there, one of your round tables. And I've never, I think I talked about it for two weeks straight. Give me some more adjectives. Passionate, uh, dedicated, team effort, uh, collaborative, uh, a little bit hedonistic. Oh, I like that word. An oasis. Yes. It is, it is, and it's a refuge. It's an escape. Yes. You do not know you are any place but Manresa when you're here. You're not thinking about the kids because it's probably a date night or a business night. Um, phone's not ringing. Phone's not ringing. That's not allowed. Um, you're not thinking of, you know, any problems you might have because from the moment you walk in and sit down, it's like, whoa, I don't know how many times I said wow that evening. It is a wow. That makes you feel good, doesn't it? Uh, yes, it does. You know, it's a case by case basis. You know, it's our goal is that when people come in, they have a great experience, they leave happy and they contemplate or consider coming back again. Yes. Uh, that is something to feel good and happy about. I don't think I slept that night because we were talking about it the whole evening. I mean, I don't cook. I'm a Jewish princess, so we make reservations. So I've eaten every place. But I've never eaten any place like Manresa. Thank you. But you know that. I mean, because everybody says the same thing. But let's talk about Manresa. So 2002, you opened up. Mm -hmm. I think you opened up on Bastille Day. Yes, July 14, 2002. Was that intentional or just by chance? No, it's, uh, we were actually pushed back uh, about nine months behind schedule. We were originally intended to open up. Right around uh, September 11th, 2001, was, uh, which was a major part of the pushback. Yes, maybe that well. was a blessing. Uh, but uh, it turned out to be serendipitous. July 14th, uh, my first restaurant, Sensovi, in Saratoga, which yes. opened up in 1995, opened on Bastille Day as well. Now, how long were you at San, San Jovi? Am I pronouncing it? San Sovi. San Sovi. I ate there 90, many times. Yeah, 95 to 2002. So I knew you and you didn't know me, and I didn't even know I knew you. Uh, well. <laughs> We probably met. We entirely possibly met. I mean, Manresa was uh, Manresa was a relocation project for Sensovi. Essentially, you really, know, we kind of packed up. The staff came over here. A lot of our key staff members. We essentially moved into a bigger and better space, a space that uh, where we wouldn't be limited by our space. So, 15 years old, 15 years young, I should say. I mean, how many restaurants? Uh, good or bad, last for 15 years, no, and you are a giant. That's it's a, a big lifetime. Deal. It's a lifetime in this business. That is a big deal. So how did you celebrate? Well, we celebrated um, through the weekend with our guests. We did a couple of special courses. We poured champagne out of Magnums. Oh. And uh, in terms of the staff, we had a big party on Monday, our first day off. And yeah, is it right. just a one-time thing, or do I still have a chance to get in on this 15th so anniversary? It's a one-time only 15th anniversary, but there's always 16 and 17. <laughs> and 18 and 19 yeah. and 20. You're still young. You're going to be yeah. here forever. I don't think Los Gatos is ever going to let you go. So that was the high point, of course, 15 years. Let's go back. You were How long was the restaurant open when you got two stars, Michelin two stars? Uh, the Michelin Guide started, I believe, in 2006 was the first San Francisco Bay Area Guide. And we got two stars in the initial guide. And you had two stars for uh, nine years? Until 2016, where we were awarded our third. Which, and that's as many as you can get at this that point, is, right? That is the top. There's only one place to go but down at this point. So, and that's not going to happen. So, is it, like the no <laughs> is it like the Nobel Prize? You get a call at 3 in the morning, and they say, you just got a third star. Well, you get a call. You, uh, you, you get a call from the director. <clears throat> you don't know who the person is. It's an anonymous call. The number's blocked. And uh, uh, they inform you about uh, what happened with you and the guide that year. The number's blocked. I don't know if I would even want to answer it, but you did. Yes, uh, you answer it. You an oh, you, so you, you knew the you know day the, it was You know coming. they're calling. You All know right. They're calling. And it's at a regular work time, or is it, is it in the middle uh, of the night? It has been in the morning. Uh, it's usually in the morning. I did receive one late, at, uh, very, very early in the morning, one or two in the morning, but simply because I was overseas when the call came through. So 
What do you say, what do you do when you find out you got a third star for Michelin? Well, I was at a party in Ireland, so we continued the party. <laughs> a few more Guinness, huh? Yeah. <laughs> so, and did you call home? I mean, did you call your staff? Because they got it too. We called the staff. Uh, you know, I, I, I went off into a corner, into a private room, and spent 45 minutes informing the staff and, and uh, close inner circle, family, friends. Uh, yeah. The people at the restaurant made sure that they knew right away. Uh, and then uh, it it's really is an explosion of people reaching out to you via phone and email and, and text. Uh, it, was, it, was, it was a very busy week and a half afterwards. Are, are your parents still alive? Yes, they are. So I, uh, so I hope they were one of the first calls. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they were the first. Said, look what I did. Yeah, look what I did. I didn't say it like that. <laughs> I didn't say that. And did mom say... I knew that was always in you, honey. <laughs> no, she was, she was, she was thrilled. She was I very bet. Thrilled. I mean, oh my gosh. That is the Nobel Prize in restaurants. Mm, I mean, it yes. is. It really okay. is. It is. It is. So three stars, and you came back, and I assume you had a little bit of a, a private celebration with the staff. No, we did. You, or you went to another restaurant and made them cook for you. Uh, there, was, um, there was a Michelin party here in San Francisco in which I attended. Uh, and then when we came back, we had a big private party with the restaurant staff, yes. So, highest point maybe in your life? Um, professionally, certainly one of them. Yeah. And maybe lowest point, and I hate to bring it up, but you know, there was that fire in 2014, mm -hmm. and I can't even imagine losing your baby for a while. I don't know, how did that affect you? Uh, it affected, uh, well, it, it, it's, it's a complex issue, you know, it's a, uh, it's, for me, uh, both personally and professionally, it changed my priorities yes. and the way I prioritize very differently. Um, it realized that everything that you work for can be taken away mm -hmm. from you, acts of God, just things can happen. Yes. So uh, you, you, you learn not to take things for granted, um, but I think it was more about prioritizing. I think. Uh, we approached the, the event as a team, as a staff. We all got together the, the day after the fire and we planned what we were gonna do. Uh, we tried to place as many bit of staff as we could elsewhere to work. Uh -huh. uh, I key, remember that. Key management personnel uh, stayed with us and we worked full time. We worked you know, a full week in our offices across the street and uh, you know, coordinating insurance and construction and right. permitting, and fire department and, and, and all the stuff that um, we normally don't deal with on a daily basis. Uh, I think the best thing about it, the, the real silver lining about it is that uh, we spent a lot of time revisiting the entire guest experience through, mm -hmm. through their eyes. You know, we, we envisioned what it was like for them to, to, to walk up the, the the, the pathway and see the sign and walking in and how they were greeted and then all the way through the, the, the meal, the service, the ambiance until the coffee and the check is dropped and, they, and the goodbye at the door. We went through that and we asked ourselves every single step of the way is, what are we doing and is there anything that we can do better? How can we improve upon it? And uh, I know that sounds, uh, like a no-brainer, but the fact of the matter is our business is, we're, we're so busy. Yes. And such long work days in, in, in our business that we have a lot of great ideas, but not a lot of time to follow them through. Right. And to think them through. And to, so we pursued this as a, we, we, we approach this as a great opportunity to reevaluate everything that we do. Which is amazing. And I think when we reopened, I think we were much more committed. We felt like it was a giant challenge. I, we felt that we had to come back and prove ourselves, and I think we were even a better restaurant when we came back. I think it was a different experience. So that's really the silver lining. That all said, you know, there's a wide range of emotions that you uh, go through when something like that happens. Well, I was working. I did early morning radio, <laughs> and I knew about the fire immediately. You know, I was at work at 4 in the morning, and I don't remember what time it broke out. It was in the middle of the night. Mm -hmm. And I was talking about it personally because I said I'd been to Manresa. I was just there, I, and, I, and I was thinking of you, to be honest with you, and I was thinking of the staff, because buildings can be rebuilt, but it's your livelihood, and it's your love, mm -hmm. and it's, it's, it's a, you know, it's, you know, a restaurant is, you know, a building's building, right. you know, 
you know, if, if the place had burned completely to the ground, there's nothing going on, we would have done something elsewhere. Right. Uh, the question is whether it would have been the same or not. Yes. So. But it is the same, but even better. I like to think so. David also owns Bywater, which opened up two years ago? January, a uh, year and a half ago. And I remember when you opened it, because it's on North Santa Cruz. It's mm -hmm. North Santa Cruz. Yeah, it's just down the road. It's just down the road. You were going to get a bike. Did you get a bike to I ride between two? Yet. So you're walking or you're driving? Well, it's, it's driving. You can't, where, where are you parking? That's a whole nother thing. <laughs> we, you probably have your own spot. But you were going to get a bike to go to both restaurants, and I've heard Bywater is fabulous. New Orleans, which you grew up in. Now, you were born in Pennsylvania. It's, I was. And then, I don't know, what, what did your parents do? My father uh, worked in the oil business, and so I was technically an oil brat. We oh. Say, uh, during the 70s. We lived in various deep south towns and moving every year or two for a long period of time until we settled in, in Louisiana. So was he working on an oil rig perhaps in Louisiana? No, it was, it was uh, more refinery stuff. Okay. You know, I was during the oil boom years, a lot of times in Texas, Oklahoma, Louisiana, that sort of thing. So you ended up, I know you were a young waiter. You were working at what, the age of 16? And the next thing you said, I don't want to be waiting. I want to be in the back kitchen. How does that, how does that work out? Well, uh, I think, you know, I was interested in watching what they were doing. I was, I liked the idea that uh, they were physically working, they were working with their hands, they were being creative. You know, I saw uh, the result of their efforts because I was working in the dining room at the time. I saw very, very happy people. And I found that very appealing. I thought of myself as being creative. I did want to work with my hands. Um, and uh, so you're an artist as well as a chef. Well, I, I don't know. I, uh, you know, working with my hands and and working with something I really like, I find very very therapeutic. I can get lost, I can get lost into to what I'm doing, and I, I like that feeling. I bet, I bet, and seeing your end product, and we're going to talk a, a little bit about that when we get into the kitchen. I mean, because I know you're here. I don't think people realize that you not only own this place, you are the chef. I guess you are considered the head chef because you have this fabulous team and a lot of women, which I love. I, when, I, when I got to go into the kitchen that one night, I was stunned at how many women were in the kitchen working right there with the guys, and I loved it. So thank you for doing that. We hire by merit. Well, I know, and it's, but it's, it's nice to be recognized because, yes, it's very hard sometimes for women to get a job um, when they're competing with a guy. Um, should we go outside? Should we go outside? Sure. So I can find out a little bit about you as a person? Sure, let's go outside. Yay! <laughs> Back at you, Lisa Chrysler, with what we call community storytelling here at KCAT TV 15. And I'm with Chef David Kinch. And if you've never been to Manresa, you may not realize this is the patio. This is what greets you when you go into the restaurant. But usually, you're sitting out there with a cocktail. Yes. So we'll pretend. Yes. What's your favorite cocktail? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Is that a loaded question? Well, it's a, a loaded question. <laughs> no, uh, I guess it all depends on the time of year. Yeah, well, summertime, fall. Uh, gin and tonics. Oh, my guy. All right. I, I'm with you on that one. Nice I almost feel we should classic. have. I like that. So out in the patio, which means I get to be a little more conversational with you and just talk about David Kinch. So when did you know you wanted to be a chef? Well, I knew I wanted to cook, I think, uh, the time that I spent in, in New Orleans, uh, moving around a lot. I think I didn't know what I wanted to do. I probably would have ended up working in sciences or something like that. I found that fascinating. Yeah, uh, yeah. Animals, that sort of thing, biology. Uh, but I think living in New Orleans uh, was a real eye-opener for me. I bet. It's, it's a city where Food and drink and restaurants are an ingrained part of the culture. Uh, it's very unusual for the United States, very European in its concept with yes. that. And I fell into it head over heels and I never left. So if I remember right, one of your best buddies is Wynton Marsalis, the, mm -hmm. the fabulous jazz musician. So, and you were, I think you're still very close with him. Mm -hmm. So do you, you cook and he plays, <laughs> or how does that work? Well, that's, that's, <laughs> I guess that's how it works. I mean, he's a very talented individual. He loves food. Like yes. That I know. I guess he's a New Orleans native, so that's no surprise. Has he been to Manresa? Mm -hmm. Many times. Oh, and, and I guess he has a special corner? Uh, he yeah. can sit anywhere. He, he can sit. Yeah, I think he can. And, you know, we haven't really mentioned Bywater, which we just mentioned it mm -hmm. by name, down on North Santa Cruz, which is New Orleans food. I guess that's why you opened it. Yes, it's kind of neighborhood New Orleans joint is exactly how we want it to be. We have an outdoor patio. 
Um, we have a nice big full service bar with a lot of creative cocktails, classic cocktails. Uh, it's a great and lively uh, soundtrack played maybe just a little bit too loud. Sandwiches, <laughs> oysters on the half shell, open for brunch. Tell me you have fried chicken. We do have fried uh, chicken. You've got to have yeah, fried chicken, yeah, right? Fried yes. Chicken. And you own one, two, three, three bakeries. Uh, Manresa Bread, which has uh, two retail outlets right now and several farmers markets in the Bay Area. And also we do all the pastries at all the Verve coffee shops in the Bay Area as well. I have friends who drive to the one in Los Altos. Well, that's great. Yes, yes, they actually go there on weekends and stand in line with everybody else. Well, that's great. Because the bread is fabulous. I love bread. That's my biggest weakness in life. Yeah, it's and a lot so, of people's greatest weakness. Yes, in life. and your bread is so, so good. All right, so we got through bread. So, at home, I need to know, do you have a fabulous kitchen at home? I have a pretty nice, it's very functional. It's very functional and efficient and, and open space, and it has a lot of natural light in it, which I like very much. So you actually cook for yourself I at home? I uh, cook a lot for myself at home. Do you make those fabulous three, no, it was a four egg omelet that I saw in Mind of a Chef. And then after I do you, do that. And then after you made this omelet, do you really do this all the time? You wrapped it up in like a, a towel to, to form it, to shape well, I it. I think I do that when I want to impress somebody. <laughs> for, for myself, I'm just ready to eat. Yeah, so you never open up like a box of Raisin Bran? Uh, not so much, you know, on my days off, uh, I, I like to cook very simply, but I, you know, I, I love cooking. You know, I, I like cooking for other people, I like cooking for myself, I get a great pleasure in it. You ever make a bologna sandwich and open up a bag yeah. of chips? I do, I <laughs> you do. You do, with mayonnaise or what? Uh, mayonnaise, absolutely. <laughs> Mustard? Yes, mustard as well. And what kind of it's bread? It's like you were there. <laughs> and what Man kind of bread? bread? Of course, of course. <laughs> Silly question. And do you ever, now this one, I, I probably already know the answer, but i got to ask. Do you ever go to McDonald's? Or I don't. In, no I, fast food? No, no fast food. You know, um, I, it's been a long time since I've done that. Um, and it's not because... It's not because of convenience or being snobby or anything like that. It's it doesn't make me feel good. I'm, I'm trying to be you know the older I get, the more health conscious I so am. So I couldn't pick you up one morning and take you to McDonald's. It probably wouldn't work. It probably I probably yeah, yeah wouldn't probably wouldn't work. Okay, um, Panera Bread. <laughs> uh, maybe well, Manresa Bread. Maybe. Okay, Manresa Bread. I can take you to Panera Bread. I'm a fa I'm a fast food junkie, and I know it's terrible for me, but. Ronald McDonald and I have had a thing for since I was a little kid. I understand. And, and I'm so upset. You're not the only one. <laughs> I know. I, I have a two-year-old grandson, and my daughter, who lived at McDonald's, tells me I can't take him to McDonald's. So I'm waiting for the day when I can sneak off with him. Yeah. So, But maybe I'll take him here instead. Evil grandmother. <laughs> I am the evil grandmother. <laughs> so you have this fabulous kitchen um, that's functional, and you cook for yourself. I mean, I can't believe it. I mean, I would think, you know, that's kind of like... You don't want to be dealing with it you know, on your off time. It, it's not for hours on end. It's it's very very simple stuff. Yeah. You know, I'm I'm fascinated with pasta right now. I've oh, had the opportunity to be through Italy a couple times, uh, the past couple years, and uh, so at home I just uh, you know I'm exploring with little simple yeah. pastas because I, I love to eat it and I, I learn a little bit. Do you explore at home and then bring that recipe here? Or on occasion, versa. but it's mostly, you know, home on days off. On your days off, okay. Yeah, I tend not to travel a lot during the summer. I like to stay home, be in Santa Cruz, enjoy the summer, enjoy the beach. And my days off, it's a busy time of the year for the restaurants, so it's a great time to reconnect and recharge. And part of that is on my days off, being at home, uh, reading books, cooking for myself, going to the beach, yeah. sleeping well, all yeah. that sort of stuff. So you live in Santa Cruz proper? I do. I've been there for 20 years now. And you surf. I know you surf. How oh, yeah. often do you get to surf? Uh, I surf when I can, you know, uh, maybe once or twice a week kind of thing. I tend to be out on the water, whether it's at the beach or on a paddle board or sailing or surfing. I just, you know, uh, I'm near or on the ocean quite a bit. Yeah, you, you look like a Santa Cruz guy. Yeah. You do. You really do. You yeah. look like you're right at home there. Well, but, I've lived there longer than I lived anywhere else. I don't know what that means. And how did you even something. end up out here? So you you were born in, in <clears throat> Pennsylvania. You go to New Orleans. You've cooked and worked at fabulous restaurants in New York and, and Europe and Japan. And here you are in Los Gatos. Well, yeah, I, I did my time in New York. You know, I, was, uh, I, I worked in New York and I really, really enjoyed it. But I was ready to leave. There was a time where I was ready to leave and explore other options. Uh, I was went to Japan, and after Japan, my family had moved to California, and that's where they've retired. My mother and my father they live in the East Bay, 
and um, so I came here and uh, if you're from the East Coast uh, all you need to do is spend one February in California to realize how special it is out yes. here and as a cook uh, you're just really shocked at the, the quality of the produce the raw product that we have to work with um, it really you know I wanted to settle here at least for a little bit yeah. and explore it and I haven't left you know, I, it, yeah. I, I originally worked in San Francisco uh, but uh, uh, chance brought me to the south bay and i've been here ever since yay lucky for us right absolutely so farm to table yeah. there must be some vegetables you don't like <laughs> um no i you know there's very little period that i don't like um uh, there's i don't think there's anything that i don't eat outright yeah um, yeah very few things and so is that what you think about when you're back in the kitchen not only what you would like to eat but you think everybody else would like to eat it I, too i think that's a big part of it i think you know manresa you know we're, we're fine dining uh it's important that everything tastes good and people find it appealing but also i think everything should have a thoughtfulness to it something uh, thought provoking about it you know why did they do it this way or i'm sh i'm I never thought they would try to do something like this. You know, there's always something yes. conversational about everything, but ultimately it has to be delicious. So in the kitchen, what we think about, we think about, you know, how we can be creative, how we can challenge ourselves, but also I think part of what we do is finding the right balance about uh, the guest pleasure, the guest comfort level and pleasure, and us being challenged and, and being creative. What do you think is the best meal you've ever made? That's a uh, toughie, huh? That's, you I know. know. I, it's, you know, the thing is, is once a day is finished or once a meal has been cooked, uh, it's the past. Move on. Yes. Because, you know, cooking is dynamic. It, it's not static. I mean, you can create memories and have memories, but uh, I don't think much in terms of lists or what's better or what's not better. Uh, you know, my, my most fond memories, you know, are not all fancy places. You know, it's, yes. it's all about conviviality, where you are, who you're with. Um, you know, certain things taste perfect uh, if you have them in an area or a time of the day where they're grown or with the yes. person you, you're with or love, you know, and all that. Those, that all plays a factor well, into it. Well, once you walk through that front door, your memory has started here. I mean, I can say that. And now I can't wait to come back. Yeah, I can't wait. You're yeah, welcome I, anytime. I can't wait to come back. And I think you're going to let me see the kitchen. Yeah. No, I have to, I have to, you know, be honest here. I can't even boil water. I mean, I use my, it's the oven, the oven. I can, the, I can show you how to boil water. I, I can show you how to boil water. I use my oven to store pots and pans that I don't use anyway, and I, you know, you have to have them. And so that's, I use my oven. I don't think I've used my oven in about five years. The stove, yeah. the microwave I use every day, you probably don't even use a microwave. No. Yes. No. You know what they are? I do, actually, you know, <laughs> I, I, you know, there's actually some really good uses for microwaves. Yeah, uh, and, like um, well, melting butter. Melting butter, melting chocolate, it's a great way to temper chocolate. Yeah. Uh, it's a very precise way of melting chocolate. <laughs> um, and also, uh, cold lobster that you want to make warm, it's, it's a great way to heat up lobster that doesn't toughen it. Because yeah. that's the bane of all cooks is... Uh, yeah making tough lobster. So, uh, that's what I've heard. Yeah. <laughs> so can we go to the kitchen? Yeah, love Let's, the go. Let's go. Come with us. Lisa Chrysler back with you with Chef David Kinch of Manresa Restaurant and you're in for a treat because I bet you, I don't care how many times you've eaten at Manresa, you haven't been in the kitchen. This is where it happens. Show me around. Tell me what, it's so, almost like a science lab. Oh. Yeah, well, uh, th this is the entire kitchen space right here, desserts come out all on this side over here. You can see they're making on, working on chocolates right here with these various bulbs. This table oh. that we're leaning on, the table here is where all the plates come out in the kitchen during the course of service. Going down this side over here, right behind you, you have uh, vegetable stations and meat stations where all the meat cookery goes on. Wow. You have this big, what we call the piano in the center of the room here where all the cooking goes on. It is the monolith. It's where the center of everything is and everybody faces each other. So now why do you call it a piano? That's the old fashioned name for it. Yeah? Yeah. Wow. Wow, that's so cool. On this side over here is all the little snacks, the hors d'oeuvres, canapes that we do. Come out off this station over here. And then around back over here is more of cold first, uh, cold first plates 
and fish cookery all the way down the other side of the kitchen. So now, are all of these chefs who are here now going to be here until closing time tonight? Yes, they are. Wow. So we're talking 12, 14 hour days? Uh, it's probably a little bit less than that, but yeah. it's a long, it certainly wow. is a long day. Wow. What, when do you guys eat? <laughs> uh, we have, you know, right, right before service time, we have a family meal where we cook for ourselves. Uh, everybody sits down, we plan the day, we talk about all the guests that are coming to the restaurant, we talk about all the dietary restrictions, we talk about seating preferences, what they like to drink, wow. what they don't like to drink. So, but, you know, what's coming in are not, not numbers. What are coming in are people who we know, and we try to approach each individual as an individual person with their likes and dislikes. I have never heard anything like that. Do you eat outside in the dining room? Or are you eating in here? Uh, we eat outside in the dining room. Some people eat in here, and when it's a really beautiful day, you find a lot of the cooks going outside. Uh, to get some of the beautiful weather we have. And you all talk about your families and you all know each other and well, it's we, a family. We, we, it's, it's our break time. It's our it's our <laughs> personal time. They talk about whatever they want. That is absolutely wonderful. And if you've never eaten at Manresa, now you're going to have to. I mean, all of these things end up on your plate. I mean, there's you get so many. It's not like you sit down and you have like a three course meal and you got the big steak and the potato. You are getting all of these inventive magical things. You're very kind. Well, I've eaten here, I know. I know so. So what's on what's on the menu for tonight? Uh, tonight we have uh, a chilled bouillabaisse, we have abalone, we have uh, duck, uh, we have new chocolate dessert, uh, a lot of stone fruit because it's the height of summertime. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, I'm sticking around. I'm not going home at all today. And so you're here. I don't think everybody realizes you're here all day too. Yeah, well, that's yeah. where I work. That's my. That's where that's you work. work. And what will you be making soon? What will I be making yes. soon? Well, I'm kind of the conductor of it. The conductor. Yeah. yeah. You're playing the piano. I'm playing the piano. Yes, that's right. Well, this is fabulous. I never in my life. I may have to pinch you before this is all over. Uh, to be not only at Manresa, which is so loved in Los Gatos and so loved worldwide, because you do have people I know who come from all over the world. Everybody knows about Mam Reza. Three Michelin stars to be in the kitchen. And I will tell you, the kitchen is spotless. As my mother would say once, once a month when she washed the kitchen floor, you could eat up the floor. But your kitchen is spotless, and that is amazing. And I have to thank you for being with us tonight. Chef David Kinch, Mam Reza, what? You've done everything. In fact, I haven't even mentioned GQ, Chef. You've been everything. That's because of your good looks, by the way. Oh. What's next? Oh boy. There's got to be something left. Is there anything left? Vacation. Oh my gosh. And where would you like to go on a vacation? Uh, I like beaches. Okay. Yeah. You take your surfboard with you? Uh, on occasion. Yeah? But I have a feeling you might have other things planned too professionally. Yeah. All right. And we're going to watch it happen. We're going to watch them all happen. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. TV talk. I love it. Thank you for being part of community storytelling, Chef David Kinch, and thank you for being with us.